All right, welcome to uh, pre-calc. We got uh, the unit P, which is like the, the prerequisite uh, unit, which we're going to go through this kind of quickly. Um, just a quick review, maybe a week and a half we'll spend on this. Um, just reviewing some of the things that we um, probably know, just haven't been reminded in a while. So to, to fly through this real quick, or not, not too quick, but um, try to keep this video short too. Uh, the first thing, the properties of exponents. Okay, so first, first property is the product rule. So our product rule um, is if you're multiplying, they have the same base. Um, let's pretend that they have different uh, exponents. And if I were, if I was multiplying the bases, then that means I add the exponents. Sorry, m plus n. That means I add the exponents. And to kind of give you an idea of that, think if I had 2 to the 3rd times 2 squared, 2 to the 3rd is just 2 times 2 times 2, and then 2 squared is 2 times 2. If I'm multiplying them together, how many total 2's am I multiplying together? Well, it'd be 5, so it'd be 2 to the 5th, so 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so that's how I remember it. Uh, the power rule, u to the m raised to the nth power, so that is different. You know, this is the, the power rule, this is product. We're multiplying together here, I'm raising a power and then to another power. Okay, so this one is when I take m times n. Okay, I'm going to multiply those guys here. I'm adding together, there I'm multiplying together. So to tell the difference here, if I had 2 to the 3rd, and I want to square that, that's the same thing as 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 3rd. Well, we just learned up here that when we're multiplying together, we um, we add the exponent. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that'd be 6 2's being multiplied together. So that's 2 to the 6th, okay, versus the 5th from up here. This is the 5th. Okay, the quotient rule, u to the m divided by u to the n. Okay, I got u to the m minus n, an example of that. If I had x to the 9th over x to the 4th, it's almost like Four of these x's cancel out four of them, so you think of it as nine minus four or x to the fifth. Okay. Uh, zero product or zero exponent is if you had u to the zero, so anything to the zero power, this one's just one. Doesn't matter. I could have eight to the zero power, that's one. I could have a hundred thousand to the zero power. Guess what? That's one. It comes out to be the same thing. No matter what. Now, negative exponents, if you remember, if I had u to the negative n, that'd be the same thing as 1 over u to the positive n. And that goes both ways also. If you had, uh, say, 1 over u to the negative n, well, if it flips back up, it'd be u to the positive n. Because that kind of goes both ways. You can do it either way with that. So u to the negative third is the same thing as 1 over u to the uh, positive third. I keep saying u, I mean y. Um, or if I had 1 over x to the negative 2, yeah, that'd be the same thing as x squared. Okay, so if it moves from top to bottom or bottom to top, switch the sign of the exponent. Okay. Okay, now on the bottom here, again, jumping around a lot, this has really nothing to do with what we just did, <laughs> but um, interval notation. And uh, see, I have kind of fill in the blank here. I have uh, the parentheses versus the brackets. Okay, so parentheses versus brackets. So here, if if, if I have, because I got two parentheses, I got one of each, let's say I had two brackets. So I had from A to B, that's interval notation. Those are both brackets. Um, that's considered a closed interval. And we say closed because um, there's a definite beginning and end. Okay, so A is the beginning. A is included all the way up to B, and B is included. Okay, that this is what it means. It means equal to. So x is larger, anything between a and b, a and b being included. Okay, now how we graph that, and, and I'll show you the way Math Excel wants it, and I'll show you the way I've, I've seen it in most textbooks. They're, they're a little different. But in Math Excel, it'll say from a to b, they'll just put brackets right here. And anything in between. Okay, so a little bit solid in between there. Um, that is the same thing as closed circles. So maybe in algebra one, uh, yeah, in algebra one, you remember seeing closed circles. That means these are included, everything between them. Okay. So if these points being included means it's closed, 
parentheses means that it's open. It's an open type. And what that really means is that X is between A and B, but neither A or B are in there. They, neither one of them are included. And how we graph that guy from A to B would be parentheses, like that. The way I've always seen it in some other books, if you probably remember from Algebra 1, it's open circle. Okay? So I, I know Math Excel will have it like this, or textbook will show it like that. I've seen this in other textbooks. So when you get to other math, it might it's good to know both. Now it is possible to have one of each. So we got this just means A is included all the way up to B, but B is not included. So that's considered half open. You might say, why not half closed? I don't know. This is what they chose. So it's considered half open. And all that means is from, from A to B, A is included, B is not, everything in between. Closed circle up to an open circle. Okay? And then the other way would be if A was not included but B was. Okay, and again, half open. Nothing changes there. And uh, so this would be A to B, B parentheses up to a number line. Okay, so number line A, B. A is not included, but B is. And everything in between. Okay? okay another random thought from the prerequisite unit is uh, formulas in the coordinate plane. So we're, we're talking about coordinate plane, which is this guy down here. And some formulas we're going to be using a lot of Pythagorean theorem. And that is um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, and, and how we use that is we're trying to find the missing side of a triangle um, given two sides, which if this is, um, eventually it applies the distance formula, but we'll, we'll kind of stick with that. Okay, so finding the missing side of a triangle when you're given two of the sides. So as long as I know two, I can find the third. Uh, the midpoint formula, as it applies to the Cartesian plane, um, it's just if you had, um, oops, that should be a C, comma, B plus D divided by 2. So basically you had the point A, um, A comma B, and then uh, C comma D. Slow down and think here. So if I was trying to find the, the midpoint between these two, so look how the x values go together, a and c, the, the y values go together, b and d. This coordinate would be the point halfway between them. Okay, and the point of that is to find the center point uh, between two other points. Now the distance formula uh, is really, it's based off of Pythagorean theorem. Um, it's just now we're going to, this is really applicable to um, the Cartesian plane. So if you have these two points, think... Uh, if I draw it up here, so we have x1, y1 here, and over here I have x2, y2, and I want to find the distance between them. I'm going to make a right triangle out of it first. Now this side right here, it's the horizontal difference, so that's the x's. So I would take x1 minus x2, so I'd have x1 minus x2, that's one side, and over here it says square, so I would take that difference and square it, then plus the, um, the b side, the other side, so this is the difference in the y's, because this is a vertical change, so I would have y1 minus y2, square that, and that's going to equal this side, which is the actual distance squared. Well, if I went just d by itself, I would square root that. Okay, so if you're if you're given x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2, this would give you the distance between those two. Okay. Okay. Now slope. Uh, slope is different. Slope is just measuring how it's changing, whether it's going up, whether it's going down, how fast it's going up, how fast it's going down. So if you remember with slope, you know, it's rise over run. Rise is the vertical change, which is going to be y2 minus y1. You could also do y1 minus y2. Um, it's not really the order there. doesn't matter. But once you've written that now, the run, it's a difference in the x's. So if I said 2, i got to put 2 here. If that's 1, that's 1. 
If I make this one, that's one, and that two is that two. So these have to go together. It's not important what order you choose first, as long as you're consistent with the x's and the y's. Now, uh, this is to define the slope or rate of change between two points. So find the slope or rate of change between two points. Now, uh, last one, let's see. So we want to classify a triangle according to the sides and angles given these points. Okay, so if I plot these points, and then I'll just, you know, we, we can just call this, you know, so we got a triangle side A, side B, and side C. We're trying to figure out is it a right triangle? Um, is it isosceles? Is it scalene? Um, you know, all the good stuff about it. So we want to classify by its size. Is it. Um, So first off, I'm going to look at these, the distance, what's the length of A, what's the length of B, what's the length of C. Okay, so I'm going to use the distance formula here to find the distance. So for A, I'm going to look at these two points, which if I fill in there, look at these two, I've got my, my X is my Y. So first, A is going to equal the square root of, and now I'm going to subtract my X's. So negative 3 minus 1 squared plus, and now subtract my Y's. 4 minus 0 squared. This is going to equal the square root of 16 plus 16, which is radical 32. I keep on with that and figure out about what that is between 5 and 6, but I don't need to necessarily know the exact number to be able to classify this by as a triangle. Side B now, again, look at these two points, look at the x's. I'm going to go 5 minus 4, so 5, I'm sorry, 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 squared plus, and now 4 minus 0 squared. So 4 and 4, that'd be, you know, square of those would be 16 plus 16, which is radical 32 again. So two of the sides are the same. It's, it's at least an isosceles triangle. It could be equilateral. It doesn't look like it's equilateral, but it could be. Um, but let's try. Let's try C now. So C is going to be, I'm going to look at these two. So I'm going to go 5 minus negative 3. Okay, so 5 minus negative 3 squared plus, and then 4 minus 4 squared. So this would be a squared is 64, that would be 0, so the square root of 64, now that would be 8. So I, I know it's isosceles, okay, it's an isosceles triangle, but now if I want to classify it by angles, well, the only formula I really have, I'm hoping it's, you know, if it's a right triangle, you know, so if we if it's a right triangle, it's, it's going to satisfy a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so let's see if it's a right triangle now. So does a squared plus b squared equal c squared? So a squared would be the square root of 32 squared plus b squared would be the square root of 32 squared, and then that'd be 8 squared. So the square root of 32 squared would be 32. The square root of 32 squared is 32. Does 32 plus 32 equal 64? And it does. So that means that this is a right isosceles triangle. Okay. Yeah, I got about a minute 20 here before it cuts me off. Um, so I've got, uh, let's see, I got the standard equation of a circle. Okay, so x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. h and k is just the center, and r is the radius. So I'm supposed to write the equation of a circle with a center to negative 3 and a radius of 3. So I'm going to go x minus, and, and h would be 2, x minus k, negative 3 would be plus 3 squared equals, and then r squared would be 3 squared, or 9. Okay, And then given the equation, what do we know? Well, the center, the center would have to be at, again, it's minus what? Well, minus negative 1 would give me a plus 1. And then this is minus 6. And then what is the radius? Well, if, if this is r squared, then square root that. Okay, if we're going to do some simplifying there, that would be 9 and 5. So 3 and 3, so this would be 3 radical 5 for me, real crazy. Okay. So my time is almost up. I need to cut the video short.